So if you're good with numbers and basic math, well, then you should be able to do this problem all in your head. So what we're talking about here is a mental math challenge. And let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. We have 1 minus the square root of 16 divided by 5. What is the answer? Okay, so the only rule here is no materials, no calculators, no paper, no pencil. You're going to do this all in your brain, all in your head. And if you have the right answer, we'll go ahead and put that into the comment section. Of course, we'll walk through how to solve this problem step by step. But before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, now the one thing about this problem is there is no rush to figure this out. So you don't have a time limit like 15 seconds or 30 seconds. So the key to figuring this out is focus, all right? Because a lot of you um, have the math skills to get the right answer, but you may not have the practice in terms of deep focus. All right, now the calculating part, uh, the actual calculations here are not that difficult, but you do, again, need to know some basic math concepts. And let's go and take a look at what you have to understand about basic math to get the right answer. So the first thing is something called PEMDAS. Really, this is an acronym, and it relates to the order of operations. So what is the correct order to do this problem? Do I do the subtraction first and then divide or do the square root last? You know, there is a, a specific order that we need to take to do this problem. Of course, uh, we have this acronym right here, which I, ex which I will explain here in just one second. But you need to understand the correct order of operations to get the right answer. Now, we're going to end up with some fractions here. And, of course, you need to know a thing or two about basic fractions. And then, obviously, we have a square root. And you need to know how to find the square root of numbers like the square root of 16. Okay, so all things that hopefully you remember from your basic math courses way back in middle school, high school, elementary school. But uh, let's go ahead and get into it right now. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the correct order to do this problem. Now, again, the calculations here are not difficult, but if you don't have the basic math concepts down, you're going to get the wrong answer. So just a quick review of the order of operations. So in math, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, powers, square roots, etc., these things are mathematical operations. So the way you approach a problem, what order you take is going to come up, you're going to basically generate different values. There's only one right order, and this is the best way to remember it. It's this little acronym right here, PEMDAS, and effectively, this is a checklist that goes from left to right. Okay, so there's a little saying that goes along with this as well. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I'm not sure what Aunt Sally uh, did, but uh, we thank her for her cool little phrase. Anyways, let's go ahead and quickly review this. So P stands for parentheses. So if you have any parentheses in your problem, you're going to do these first. Uh, it could also be brackets like this. So we're really talking about grouping symbols. So that's what P is. Now, of course, in this problem, we don't have any parentheses, so we don't have to worry about it. All right, so we're going to move on to the next thing, and that is exponents. But exponents are really uh, powers. Okay, So when you have something like 2 to the third power, this little number up here is called the exponent. This number down here is called the base. Now, one thing that you may not be aware of, aware of, excuse me, is that exponents, you can think of square roots as an exponent as well. So the square root of 4 is equivalent to 4 to the 1 half power. So now we have an exponent up here. So here, it's not just powers. You can also be thinking about square roots. Now, of course, this is uh, going to come in handy because obviously we have a square root in our problem. Okay, so that's what E stands for. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the next thing. And this is a very commonly confused thing. Matter of fact, let me just tell you what M, D, A, and S stand for. So M stands for multiplication. D is division. A is addition. S is subtraction. Okay, now I did say that this was a checklist that goes from left to right. So you would think that, oh, we got to do all multiplication and then division. That's not the way it works. We're going to do uh, multiplication and or division, whatever we see first from left to right. So if you've got multiplication, then division, you're going you're gonna to do it this way. 
uh, division, excuse me, and the or if you have division, then multiplication, you'll do it this way. You have to look at what comes first, again, from left to right, and addition and subtraction work the same way. So whatever you see first from left to right. Okay, so again, this is the order of operation. It's absolute critical basic math concept you must understand. And uh, now let's go ahead and uh, put this uh, knowledge to work in this problem. Okay, so we're going to go down here and we're scanning and we're thinking about that PEMDAS, right? So I've kind of already given you uh, the right answer. So we're going to go through PEMDAS and you can write this down or, you know, see this in your brain. So are there any parentheses? No. Are there any powers? Are there any exponents? Yes, we can think of this square root as an exponent. So we're going to have to do this first. So we're going to stare at this because, again, we're doing this in our brain and you're focusing, you know, you're really focused like this. Uh, you know, you're just really thinking about this problem, but you're not trying to figure out everything. You're kind of scanning through it and you're like, all right, what is the first thing I have to figure out? You're thinking about, all right, what would that guy on YouTube, he was talking about PEMDAS or right, E. I have to figure this out. This square root is 16. So the square root of 16 is four. All right, so basic math stuff. So the square root is 16. The square root of a number is basically what? It, well, it's a question that is saying what number times itself gets back to 16, and that is four. Okay, because four times four or four squared is in fact 16. Okay, so now in your brain, you want to be thinking about this problem as not 1 minus uh, the square root of 16 divided by 5, but 1 minus 4 divided by 5. So, you know, you kind of go from here to here, and then you just kind of recite this in your brain. Okay, 1 minus 4 divided by 5, 1 minus 4 divided by 5. And now we have to go back to our PEMDAS, right? Because we have some operations here. We have subtraction and division. So what are we going to do next? Well, again, uh, you know, referring back to our little checklist here, well, there are no parentheses, no P. We took care of our exponents, our square root. Uh, there is there multiplication and division? Yes, indeed. That's always going to trump addition and subtraction, so we have to do the division uh, first. Now, uh, this problem, what you don't want to do is take 4 and divide it by 5 and try to actually come up with a decimal value, okay? What we want to do here is think of this as a fraction. So 1 minus, now your brain's going to focus in over here on the 4 divided by 5, and 4 divided by 5 is the same thing as 4 fifths. All right, so 1 minus 4 divided by 5 is um, the equivalent problem here is 1 minus 4 fifths. Okay, so at this point in the problem, Hopefully, if you didn't figure this out up to, uh, you know, this point, uh, now I'm going to ask you, what is the answer? Could you do the mental calculation to figure this out? Well, you uh, should be able to, but of course you need to understand fractions, right? So we talked about our knowledge of uh, the order of operations, right? So that's come in pretty handy. And we talked about square roots. So the last thing we need to understand is fractions. Okay, so, you know, in our brain, we're just kind of focusing in on uh, doing this problem one step at a time. And then we kind of have to use rote memorization, which is just like, you know, we're kind of repeating this over and over and over again. It's kind of like, remember, uh, before we had cell phones, uh, those of you that are of the age, uh, where we had to actually memorize phone numbers, right? Like, uh, oh yeah, 222-301-4678, whatever the case is. We actually had to memorize a lot of things, your social security number or whatever the case is, right? So, you know, you have a lot of practice in rote memorization all before, again, our cell phones basically took over our lives and with our contacts and everything else. So at this point, we want to keep... Um, using rote memorization to keep the latest version of the problem uh, in mind. So right now we're going to forget the beginning of the problem and we're just focused in on 1 minus 4 fifths. Okay, so 1 minus 4 fifths is what? Well, we have to subtract fractions. Now a lot of you are going to say, oh yeah, if we have 1 and you take away 4 fifths, uh, there's only 1 fifth left. That is absolutely right and hopefully most of you are able to do this without and going through these calculations. Uh, but if you had to go through these calculations, what we need to do here is subtract uh, one uh, minus four fifths, but we need to think of one as a fraction. So that's one over one, okay? Now we need to get a common denominator, which of course is going to be five. So one is the same thing as five over five, because five divided by five is one. And of course, now we have the same denominator. So you can't add or subtract fractions. 
unless you have the same denominator. So uh, 1 minus 4 fifths is the same thing as 5, uh, 5 over 5 minus 4 over 5. And now we can sub uh, subtract these fractions because we have the same denominators. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we're simply going to subtract the numerators. So we have 5 minus 4, which of course is 1 over 5 or 1 fifth. Okay, now again, don't feel bad if you didn't get this problem right. You know, um, my videos aren't intended to make anyone feel bad. But I think it's a good reminder that you want to do some mental math. Okay, when you can't, even if you have uh, your calculator, you know, see if you could do some of these calculations in your head and double check yourself. It's really, really good to keep your brain sharp. And again, you just never know uh, when you're going to have to do uh, some quick calculations and you don't have your calculator or any paper or pencil around. Uh, and it just keeps you sharp in terms of your brain, uh, you know, activity. Uh, unfortunately, you know, out there as we age, you know, there are these, you know, um, our brains, you know, our muscles and, you know, you have to work them as well, just like our, the rest of our body. So doing things like this or doing other games that involve numbers is really, really healthy for you. So if you want more, uh, if you want to do more of these prompts, uh, well, on my YouTube channel, I have done, you know, more mental math prompts. So you can check that out. Now, if you are interested in relearning math just for the heck of it, and you're like, hey, you know what? I want to learn some math. Maybe you um, miss learning math way back from the 1960s, 70s, 80s, whatever the case is. Well, I have the perfect course for you. That's called my Math Skills Rebuilder course. You can find a link to that in the description. But uh, this is for those of you that just want to kind of improve your math skills or just do this as something, you know, uh, as a kind of positive way to uh, spend your free time. Okay, so hopefully this little video helped you out in some small way or entertains you. Either way, make sure to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.